Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alyssa Queen with Queen at Home Lactation Services. I'm a registered nurse and board certified lactation consultant. Let's just get right into it and start off by saying that I am filming this on April 28th of 2020. Please always double check all of the resources that I've listed to see if they've updated any information or check your local kind of governing bodies to see if there's any updated information, especially if you're watching this quite a bit in the future. So first, let's start off with the question that I get asked the most and kind of the most important one, first of all, is it safe? Is it safe to continue directly breastfeeding, chest feeding, or providing human milk to my infant? And in a word, yes, it is safe. It is recommended. It is the best thing that you can be doing for your baby at this time throughout this pandemic. There is no evidence that coronavirus has ever been spread through human milk and it is safe to donate or obtain donated breast milk. I will link the donation information for North Americans in the accompanying information PDF. If you go down to the links below, you'll find it there. And in fact, I will be linking every piece of information that I refer to or have used to inform myself with. That way, if you would like to look up these resources yourself or continue to update yourself, you will know absolutely where to go. The current recommendation from the World Health Organization, I'm gonna quote it here so you're gonna see me reading it. A birthing person with COVID-19 should be supported to breastfeed, chest feed, safely hold their newborn skin to skin and share a room with their baby. I did somewhat change the pronouns to be inclusive with that information in mind. And by the way, I might also refer to the World Health Organization as WHO, that is their acronym. So if you hear me say that, you'll know who I'm talking about. So knowing the information who has just provided, there are some ways to make sure that while you're directly breastfeeding, chest feeding, or pumping, to do that in the most safest way possible. First, wear a mask to avoid transmission through any respiratory droplets as you will be quite close to your infant. Wash your hands before and after touching your body, touching your infant, touching any kind of mechanism that will be touching the baby, um, whether that be a bottle, pump, pacifier, anything like that. Make sure you're washing your hands before and after anytime you're touching and routinely clean and disinfect surfaces, which I feel like we're all doing as new parents anyway, but definitely if you are positive or are suspected to have COVID-19, then definitely that's going to be a major thing that you're going to have to kind of keep on all the time, which I know is hard because you're probably not feeling super great and you're taking care of a newborn, but those three things will really make sure that you are all as safe as possible while still providing that breast milk, chest milk. I'm going to quote who again, so you're going to see me look off to the side, but if a parent feels too unwell to directly breastfeed, chest feed, they state that the parent can be supported to safely provide their breast milk, chest milk in other ways, including expressing milk, relactation, and donor milk. Those are three absolutely viable ways that you should be supported in doing if you are just not feeling up to it and still want to make sure to provide that human milk. Another question, probably the second most common question that I get asked is, but is it really worth the risk? Everything is the risk. Is it really even worth bothering to try to do this? And again, yes, there are so many health benefits to breastfeeding, chest feeding during many illnesses, including coronavirus. Even beyond coronavirus, breast milk, chest milk absolutely saves infants lives. It's highly recommended, especially in NICU settings, that the parent does provide that if they are able, as it has so, so many health benefits. I won't get too into that here because that would be the whole video long, but a good summation is this quote from, again, the World Health Organization, quote, breastfeeding protects against morbidity and death in the post-neonatal period and throughout infancy and childhood, end quote. Of course, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't take those proper precautions as we discussed previously. Another question that I actually don't get as much, and I wish that I did because I think this is a very important question and bits of information, is are there risks if you stop breastfeeding, chest feeding, or in general providing human milk if you have been exposed to or are positive for coronavirus? As will apparently be the answer to every question I'm going to list on here, yes, there are risks. Sudden weaning 
can increase the lactating parent's risk of getting breast infections, including mastitis. The infant will be at greater risk for getting an illness, including COVID-19, as they will not have the antibodies normally given from parent to child through that human milk. Once the pandemic has stabilized or passed or whatever that's going to look like in the future, convincing that infant to learn that whole latching process as well as relactating or getting that supply back for the lactating parent isn't always easy and isn't always possible or successful in the way that we would like. Lastly, there is also emotional trauma generally associated with sudden unexpected weaning for both the parent and the infant. If you really do need or want to wean, there are absolutely safe ways to go about that, but it is just good to know the benefits and risks of lactating in this coronavirus world. A question that I have been getting a lot is if it is so beneficial to directly breastfeed chest feed in regards to the COVID-19 coronavirus, why are hospitals separating infants and parents and doing practices which are not exactly supportive of this breastfeeding, chest feeding relationship? My answer is I wish I knew. I hate to say that I've worked in hospital settings and continue to work in hospital settings for the large majority of my career. I respect them as organizations and I think they do amazing work a lot of the time. But unfortunately, the reality is hospital systems are kind of big machines that take a long time to change trajectory or make changes in practice. This is supported information that I will link that is very well known in the medical community, but hospitals, generally speaking, are about 17 years behind best practice in regards to new research and new practices. And with the COVID-19 coronavirus being such a new illness, and when you have a system that's generally quite behind in practices, birth practices especially, that's quite an interesting dynamic. Here I want to quote a medical doctor named Allison Stubbe, I believe is how you pronounce her last name. Apologies if I mispronounced it, but I wanted to quote her. She is the president of the Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine, which makes protocols and information that is generally considered to kind of be best practice in the lactation world. She has kind of talked about these problems that are created when infants and parents are separated, and especially in those critical hours or days immediately immediately following delivery. Infants who lack skin-to-skin -skin contact with their parents tend to have higher heart rates and respiratory rates and lower glucose levels. The separation also stresses the parent, which could make it more difficult for them to fight off the viral infection. In addition, separation interferes with the provision of parental milk to the infant, which is important for the development of the infant's immune system. Separation also disrupts breastfeeding, which puts the infant at increased risk of severe respiratory infections, including pneumonia and COVID-19. So knowing that information, I encourage you to find a provider and a birth setting that is going to be most supportive and safe for your preferences, your needs, and your situation. Because I know that this is kind of a scenario where our rights and options as parents feel very limited. I would call the institution ahead of time if you are able, if you know where you would like to deliver or plan to deliver. Are they universally separating parents and infants if they have any symptoms or maybe suspected of coronavirus or are positive? is an automatic separation? Do they have the right to refuse that separation as a parent? I've noticed the CDC information has been somewhat misquoted in being quote-unquote supportive of separating families. Really what they actually stated, and I will quote this, is that it's collaborative decisions to either separate or keep the infant and parent together. Meaning it's not a unilateral forced decision that you must separate from your infant. Quote, determination of whether to keep a parent with known or suspected COVID-19 and their infant together or separated after birth on a case-by-case -case basis using shared decision-making between the parent and the clinical team. Shared. That is really what I want you to walk away with in this knowledge, is that it is a shared decision, not supposed to be a forced decision. So in a nutshell, what are the recommendations for coronavirus and breastfeeding, chest feeding optimally and safely? This is summarized from the World Health Organization and La Leche League International. They recommend having parents and infants together to maximize that skin-to-skin -skin time and kangaroo care where possible. You want to optimize giving that infant as much human milk as possible. Even when the parents are ill, if they are able, they should be strongly supported to provide as much of that human milk as possible. And ideally, if possible and appropriate, it is recommended that you wait to wean until this pandemic has passed. Remember again, use those safe practices, 
wash your hands, disinfect all surfaces, Use a mask to reduce the risk of respiratory droplet transmission. If you are pumping and bottle or alternative feeding, follow the best practices for pumping, for storage and container use, such as bottles or cups. I've linked those below. There is great CDC little kind of infographics. And the last recommendation is limit the number of people feeding your infant. The more people your infant comes in contact with, the higher the risk of an exposure. For those of you who don't know, I have a website, queenlactation.com. Please check that out. It has even more resources as well as ways that you can book with me if you would like a private consultation or class. Don't forget to thumbs up this video if you liked it, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and if you have any questions at all, please leave them below. I'd be happy to answer anything that comes up. Don't forget to get that coupon code if you would like to book with me listed below and in the handout information. Thanks again. See you next time.